There was a man much hunted by the Phillies' front office at the trade deadline. He was forgotten quickly, though, when Cliff Lee arrived in town and pitched stellar through the final months of the season. But now the name arises again. Could this be a holiday surprise? Your High Hopes podcast starts right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a High Hopes podcast. I'm Shay Roddy, and joining us now uh, from highhopesblog.com and NBC10, it's Matthew Nato, and from highhopesblog.com, Spencer Ryder. And what a a remarkable day it's been! One of the you know craziest days I can remember in the in the history of the hot stove season. And but what are your thoughts? I mean, Roy Halladay for Cliff Lee. Uh, Matt, let's start with you. I mean, what are your, your thoughts on this? Is this a good move for the Phillies? You know, i got to be honest. At first, I didn't think it was. I felt like we needed Lee. We needed a holiday and a Lee if we're going to compete with that Yankee with that Yankee staff that, I mean, you know, obviously looked a heck of a lot better than the Phillies did during the World Series. We saw a lot of our weaknesses. But, you know, now that you hear that Ruben Amaro Jr. was trying to work with Cliff Lee's agent and trying to set something up, for a contract extension, and apparently Cliff Lee wants to see you like money. Um, I, I think it's good for the Phillies. I mean, you, you see the opportunity there. They obviously wanted this guy, and bringing in Seattle in the deal, you don't lose Dre Beck, you don't lose Hap. You either lose Dominic Brown or Michael Taylor. You lose one of the guys you wanted to, but it's a heck of a lot better than, you know, what that deal was looking like in July where, you know, we could have gave up our top pitching prospects. Right. By the way, uh, Jim Salisbury, uh, formerly of the Inquirer, is now at uh, CSNPhilly.com, and he is reporting just moments ago via Twitter that um, the the prospect piece is Drabeck. He says that Brown is safe, but he says Drabeck is now in the mix. So yeah. there is there is news coming in, you know, fast as fast as can be. But uh, but but Spencer, let's get your thoughts. Well, I mean, what do you think? Is this Good move. You know, I completely agree with Matt. When I first heard about this, I was like, you know, what's going on here? I like Chris Lee and Philly. He pitched wonderfully, as you said, for us in the uh, World Series and the playoffs last year. But now, as everything goes through, you hear the rumors that Chris Lee, you know, he wanted to be in the market. He wanted to see what was going on. He wanted more money. So I like the fact that Javi is coming here now. You know, he's free for a championship. He's a style pitcher. He's a great pitcher. And, you know, he knows he can move on here. And I think we're going to get a Another thing that's been thrown up, you know, against the wall, and kind of let's throw it up and see what sticks fashion, that doesn't necessarily have any, you know, feet to it or whatever, is, you know, instead of uh, Cliff Lee, maybe throw in Jay Happ and, you know, Kyle Drabeck and then Joe Blanton or something like that. Now, do you do you like that scenario, or are you just as willing to give up Cliff Lee? Matt? Um, you know, you, you, we saw what Hack can do. You know, he, he was great last year. He's runner-up in the, in the Rookie of the Year award. I mean, he had a great year, great lefty. Um, you know, Dre Beck, we haven't seen this guy yet, but it's almost like he's getting Carrasco hype. And, I mean, we saw what happened to Carrasco just because of that. But maybe they're hyping him up trade date, but um, I'm reading here on uh, MLBTradeRumors.com that Hap and Blanton just took physicals, so I mean, I don't know if they're going to be part of this deal, nothing's been said yet, but I mean, they could be. I mean, I love Joe Blanton, but I mean, it, and then I hear that one of the reasons that they didn't get Lee and Halliday for this year, because I mean, Lee was due $9 million because they couldn't clear Blanton what he was worth. But, I mean, if we get rid of Blanton or I, mean, I haven't seen very bad. You know, I mean, none of us have. We saw what Hat could do. If he's had to get rid of Hat, especially if, you know, all things considered, if Halliday does sign the extension. But, um, I mean, if we get rid of Dre back, I mean, we haven't seen what we could do. We know what Halliday can do. He's a Cy Young winner. And if that means that we can keep him and Luffy, we're both Cy Young winners, I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't, considering what we've seen so far. Right. And, uh, if I could jump in real quick. Sure. Um, I think you guys would pro- both probably agree that I mean, all the pressure's on Cole Hamels now. Whether he can be the guy that he was in 2008 in the playoffs or whether, you know, we're going to see the guy whose velocity is down on his fastball and he has no confidence in his changeup. I mean, I really see him as the X-Factor because when we, you look at it, 
we thought that he could be that ace that we've always wanted him to be at the end of 2008. And clearly he just showed last year that he could do that. Right, and, that, and that's a thing that's bothered me throughout the course of today and, and the off season in general is people just completely discounting Cole Hamels. And, you know, he has been, sure, he had his struggles in 2009, but he was the, he was a force, you know, as much as anyone else on that 2008 team. And he has shown you that he has the potential. You can say what you want about his work ethic, his attitude, etc. But, I, you know, I... I, I just don't think you can say, you know, he's not an ace because he's proved to you in the past that he can be. And for for me, I, I'm i not saying that this team only has one ace when they bring in Roy Halladay and get rid of Cliff Lee. You know, people are saying, oh, well, now they only have one ace where they could have had two aces. Well, no, they still have Cole Hamels. And you have to remember that in 2008, there was no Cliff Lee. There was no Roy Halladay. It was all Cole Hamels, and he, you know, he, he he held his own. I don't see any reason why he can't go back to that. So I guess my question to you, Matt, would be, can can he return to his 2008 form? You know, I, I think it's tough to say. Um, unless there was, I mean, he's got to get healthy first and foremost. I mean, look how many injuries he had in a row last year. He started off hurt. I mean, he's definitely got to get calm. I think, and you know what? I think it's all in his head. I, yeah. I think that you know he's he's got to sit back and look that you know I don't know if he wanted to be the guy, the go to guy because he didn't really show it a lot of times that he wanted to be that go to guy. But I think when you wrap up Halliday in a deal like this for four years, a lot of that pressure of being the ace of being that guy that we need is off his shoulders. So I think that I mean if he could just step back and see the potential that he has and you know we've seen it we've seen that this guy could be an ace if he could just step back and you know just absorb what he has and just relax I think we'll be okay but I mean I I don't know if he's going to be able to do that uh, we, we have just a couple more minutes but uh, I, you know I'd like to get kind of a final final thought from each of you you know on this deal because it's just been such a outrageous day you know and uh What's kind of your your thought on on what what could be? You know, either it could be in five minutes, it could be tomorrow morning, it could never happen. But but what what would it mean if the Phillies were to have Roy Halladay and Cole Hamels as their one-two punch? Matt. Um. Well, I definitely think that the shift in this city is going to go from from Eagles to Phillies. Especially on the day like today when we had a big, Eagles had a huge win against the Giants last night and all we're doing is talking about the Phillies. But, I mean, I think that if we can keep Hap and if he doesn't get caught up in the mix, I mean, I think that we'll have a solid rotation, especially with Blanton and Eats innings. We'll have a solid rotation. And, I mean, as far as the bullpen's concerned, you know, we could even throw Hap in there if Drabeck comes out. If we don't get rid of Drabeck, you know, considering where this stands right now, that those two – guys aren't in the mix. I mean, I think that we'll be all right, but I mean, again, it, yeah, you don't really lose much with Lee going and how they come in. I mean, Lee was about as good as you can get last year. So, I mean, it comes down to him getting those wins that he needs to get and just getting focused. Right. Spencer, quickly. I mean, I'm very optimistic. Spencer? Uh, yeah. You know, <clears throat> I agree completely. I agree with the fact that it's kind of an even trade-off Sending out Cliff Lee, bringing Roy Holiday, but the big thing now is the the Yankees won't get them, the Red Sox won't get them. They take them off the chart. Now Cliff Lee goes to the Mariners, and we we pretty much have a free go there. So we have we may have an advantage, which will work out because you know Yankees get Cliff Lee. Uh, I mean Roy Holiday. Sorry, sorry. There's a one two punch CC then uh, Roy Holiday, and that could be a problem for the Phillies in the upcoming you know World Series now, and you could have. Matt, Spencer, thanks so much. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, th- that was Matthew Nadu and Spencer Ryder. You can check out their columns anytime on highhostblog.com, both very talented writers. And um, uh, also, uh, Homer Plate, I know a lot of you enjoy reading Homer Plate. He was sick the last couple days, but he has a new column up tonight, so check in for that. Get your Homer Plate fix in tonight. Thanks to all of you for listening. 
Good night, everyone.